where that they go. Well, Robert O'Dean, we have a great interview with us today. We got everything in store, you know, and you know I'm going to have questions of this young lady because there's somebody looking over her shoulder. I don't even know, you know, I'm kind of, kind of scared. You it's know, an angel. We, we living in, in, the, in the, the land of the giants because, you know, they said uh, uh, angels watching over me. You know, uh, each and every day. Robert O'Dean, who do we have with us today? Ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to have this young lady. We have been working to get together for a while, but God's timing is the best timing. And one thing about her that really, really um, sticks in my heart is that she overcame. She's an overcomer. So many people um, succumb to their situations, but this young lady found a way to press through, and she's being a blessing to people all over the world. You can make it no matter what your situation is, and there is hope. Ladies and gentlemen, she's an author of about three or four books, and she's here with you this morning, Miss Angela Holmes. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's an yeah. honor to have you. Um, you've been going across the country doing so much with this latest book. Where are you from, and when did you start writing? Um, I'm originally from Sacramento, California. Cali. I started, yeah, I actually started writing when I was residing in Georgia um, in 2007. So it took me, I would say, seven years to write three books. But three. I didn't know that I was writing a book. Wow. So three years to, to write those books. That's a lot. Seven. seven years, excuse me. That's a lot of books to write in such a short period of time. There had to be a lot of things that you wanted to get out to the people. Yes, I was using um, my writing as therapy, actually, during my uh, work hours at the hospital. So I would just carry a notebook with me and just, you know, it was just put on my heart to just start writing to release everything I was holding in. That's a powerful statement. Um, people always say that it's good to journal that it's good to write things down, even as songwriters, to keep a pad or a recorder next to you so when things come in dreams or things come in from you watching something on TV or something inspiring you, it helps you to get that out. Let's yeah. talk about this latest book because it is a powerful one. Um, my latest one is Here I Am, and I do have it here with me if you can see it. Mm -hmm. um, what I did with my series... Um, if you know the first cover, it's kind of dark. And then the second cover of my second book is entitled, I Don't Look Like What I've Been Through. And that talks about relationships. But this last book is bright. It's yellow, um, symbolizing the peace and joy that God has given me through my transition. Okay. So, so, so the yellow don't mean slow down and read my book. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to read it. You want to read it. Right. Okay. <laughs> And so uh, uh, I want to I want to talk to you just this for you know how somebody said they all up in your mouth, you know. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask the question as one of the one. There's a uniqueness that people that have gaps have uh, uh, in in the community. Uh, are you part of that whole uniqueness that I've been hearing about? Because there, there's a whole group of sisters that like said if you got a gap that you you, you a special person. I do believe I'm special. Um, I've always wanted to close my gap, but my father said, no, that's your signature. So um, rest in peace. He's gone now. But uh, yeah, um, it, it, it brought a uniqueness to myself. It did. Keep it, sister, because we men have one, too. Keep it. Well, well, well you know, <laughs> the, the reason why I ask that is because uh, one of the things <clears throat> I love about um, we as African-Americans, we, we definitely know how to remix something for things that people will try to make it seem like a flaw, we make it be very beautiful and very trendy. And I think that um, it is truly a part of your signature look and it takes nothing away from your beauty. It just adds to your uniqueness. And so I, I wanna celebrate you too for standing strong on, on who you are as you are right now. Let's talk about this book. You said that it's yellow, it's bright, it, it, it's, it's almost like happy and overcoming. Uh, when you when you wrote this book, um, as you're in the hospital, you said you're in the hospital. What do you do in the hospital? Um, at the time, I was a nurse extender. Um, it's like an assistant to the nurse for the patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, during during the breaks that I had or in the hallway, I would just write. And um, what what I feel is that 
<clears throat> it brought to my attention, uh, God did that, you know, to get everything out, to really look at the big picture of what my past looked like and what he brought me through and then where I was at that point in time. Um, I thought, I didn't know that I was going to have three books. I was just writing. It wasn't until I met a young lady um, named Sunny that, you know, she said, well, you should tell your story because a lot of times, you know, we are shamed. Uh -huh. I was definitely. Um, so it wasn't until she um, convinced me to go ahead and share my story. Um, we published the first book. And then the editor at the time I was working with, he said, well, you have actually three books here. You just probably need to put an ending on each one, you know. So in the end, for the third book, this actually finished and was published in 2020 during COVID. So it, um, it extended from my present time. So my father had passed. I had recently gotten gotten married. Uh -huh. and, um, I just wanted to bring all of that to the forefront so that people will see the transition was mighty. You know, yeah. God did amazing things uh -huh. in my with my transition. And I know um, initially when I wrote the first book, my, my story is really raw. It's relatable. And um, people tend to judge the first book. But you have, but I did it, well, God did it because he wants to get the attention of the the women or the men that are going through the things that I've gone through uh -huh. well, because well, it really is a revolving circle in life. Well, you I'm, I'm so going to interrupt you because, okay. because cause you're teasing the folks because uh, uh, I see you got the Trinity book, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But that first can, one. Can, can okay. you... Can you give us this some snapshot of the father and then a snapshot of the son book and then give us a snapshot of the because he you, you, you're going around it but you know uh, you see inquiry and, minds want to know and and the whole thing of how you you lay it out is instead of selling the one book today we could probably get the trilogy sold but you got to give them a little bit of the trilogy of the father son the Holy Ghost so could you do that for us yes okay. So um, in my first in my first book, I'm talking about the situation um, in my transformation. So I am a survivor of gun violence, domestic violence, and incarceration. Mm -hmm. So in the first book, it shows the street life that I was in. It shows the altercations I was in, the things you know in the world, mm -hmm. right? And then the second book is I Don't Look Like What I've Been Through. And that takes you through the dynamics of different toxic relationships. You okay. know. Okay, I'm going to stop. Wait a minute. So <laughs> it, it, as party as you are, you mean to tell me that you, you, you was behind bars locked up? Yes. Ooh. You, you know, look at look at all the, all the brothers that was about ready to DM you. They were like, hold on, wait a minute. She said she was married and, and she had some gun. <laughs> <laughs> they they're like, uh oh, wait a minute, hold up. Okay, so you so that's the first book. The second book you want to talk about again, domestic violence? Yeah, it's uh through my toxic relationships. I was married to a gentleman um who was actually a Marine, not doing a stereotype, but you know, and so that didn't go so well. Um in previous relationships as well. Um a lot of a ver verbal and abusive, um, physical abuse. Mm -hmm. And so I talk about the dynamics of that and how we need to be aware of the red flags. Mm -hmm. But of course we're not. And of course we want to change someone that we feel is damaged, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not always the case. You can't change anyone. They have to want to change for themselves. Come on. So then my third book oh, wait, is wait, stop, stop it. They, they, okay, they, okay. I want I want to make sure I'm, I'm trying to get navigate this in, in my space right now. Okay. So okay. help me with this. While mm -hmm. you were going through your first book and then your second book, where was your walk with God at that point? Was it strong? Was it what 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 was there a transition? So, in the first book, um to lay out the foundation, I went to Catholic school for 8 years. Mm -hmm. That was only that was the only um relationship or introduction that I had to to the Lord mm -hmm. okay my parents were not saved at the time my father did get saved when I was in the eighth grade and I did get baptized at 15 mm -hmm. okay. but during that time I was one of those ones that was like I am not going to church and you know even though you might say oh Jesus or you know you praying mm -hmm. maybe I don't even recall 
praying that much, but I know for sure, you know, I'm wearing what I need to wear to get attention. I know that um, I want to be wherever the men were, mm -hmm. you know, in all honesty. And I was not going to church. And when my father would call to say, are you going to come to church today? I was like, I would act like I was asleep or didn't hear the phone ring or, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, so, so that was so not you, in were, my forefront. Were, were you the girl that the, in the in the song, the men all pause? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will admit you that, that, I, that. <laughs> okay. I, I can say that that's that's true. Okay. And so when I moved to Georgia after the incarceration and the gun violence, I moved to Georgia where my dad was. Now, Georgia, um, which is the second book that um, I wrote about, that let me be who God called me to be. That let me be myself without the distractions of the neighborhood of the the different people environment. You know, in the environment yes in the hood or whatever and so there is where i saw and i will say in creflo um on tv i never heard of him it was in 98 and we had a great experience through the television and i i talk about that in the book so that is what brought me back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so when when someone notices something that you do, like for instance, I had a dirty mouth. So I used to curse a lot. Mm -hmm. What? Someone brought to my attention, like, you're too pretty to be have a mouth like that. And I was so offended. I was like, What? What do you mean? You know? So in that instant, you know, like they say, you you ask God to remove something. In that instant, it was like that offended me so much that I was like, okay, Lord, I don't want to be that way. And it's like, he stopped it instantly. It was like, um, I was more conscious of what I said and mm -hmm. how I said it. So I stopped the cursing and it was so, um, prevalent that my mother, which smoked, drank and cursed would apologize if she slipped out a curse word when we were talking. So that was the major thing that God did in an instant for me. Wow. So from there, I just continue to to pray and realize that he did save me from being shot. He did save me where I could have been in prison up until today. Wow. You know, and and just um, open my eyes to what type of relationship I wanted, what type of man that I wanted to, you know, have relationships with and well, be and be respected. Well, I'm going to ask this. I'm going to pitch this over to Robert because, you know, I'm trying to get the full story to know this young lady from Sacramento, California. So uh, I'm looking at your face and everything like that. I don't see a mark on it. So when I assume that you have hands, that you, that, 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 you know, if anybody come to you, that they might, you know, don't let them catch them hands. She put her hair in a ponytail and some grease on her face. No. Um, that's the thing. I was not a fighter. Okay. I, I was not, I was not that type of person. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a two parent home. Um, my father tried his best to keep me out of the hood. Right. But once, once my parents divorced, I became, um, what do they call it? Um, like a statistic of my environment. Wow. You know? And it was like, it was exciting to me. Like, whoa, like all the dudes, the music, the cars. You know, I didn't do drugs or anything like that, but I was around people that dealt drugs. And Were you like, sheltered? Were you sheltered? So when the time came, ooh, I got this freedom. I'm, I'm going for it. I won't say sheltered. It was just that my dad taught me a lot of morals. Gotcha. So I was, I was probably um, fascinated right. more than curious, okay. you know? Yeah, I was fascinated more than curious. And so with that... Um, no, I wasn't a fighter. I was more like um, a daddy's girl. So mm -hmm. I was a spoiled one in the hood where, okay, I'm the one that had the car. Everyone knew um, that's Glenn Holmes' daughter, right. you know, because he was a bail bondsman and he serviced the community in which I lived at the wow. time. Yeah. Oh, so, 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 so that daddy has some thug tendencies because you know bail bondsmen they ain't no joke. Yeah, and and as we as we. As I grew and as he read the first book, he was like, girl, you should have been a boy, you know, because I took on his male characteristics far as relationships, um, just adventurous, you know, and, right. um, you know, just toughness. Right. 
So the million dollar question is, what caused you to go to prison? It's so Stop. different for somebody like you who came from two parents, came from a good family. What caused you to go to where you were in prison? That's a big step. Okay, so I was in a relationship with a, a man. Um, and actually, you know how your cousin will hook you up with somebody yep. and you're like, uh, I don't think so. But it was like I was intrigued by the money, by the cars, you know, his uh -oh. demeanor. Uh -oh. And so um, for the first year, it was like, this my man, you know, I'm, he's, I'm his girl, you know? So in the neighborhood, it was kind of like, you know, they together, you know, the whole thing. And so I was so used to being with him all the time that this one incident, um, he was with another female uh -oh. and it just like shocked me. Cause I was like, who is this? Who is that? You know? And who did in, girl Harpo <laughs> in the situation, it was like, um, I did, a, I did address him. I didn't address her. I did address him. But then in the arguments of calling names and everything, it was like it switched to her. I knew nothing of this this woman, actually, because I was only 19. And now that I know further, uh, she was 24. And so um, I knew nothing of her, but it was like, you know, the cattiness and the, the bickering. So it turned from me addressing him to now addressing her. Mm -hmm. So ended up in an altercation and she was fatally stabbed. And it's like, I just had, it's like something that never goes away. So I just recently, you know, was playing it back in my mind again, how from it, from looking and reading Ephesians, we have to know what's pleasing to God and know that we cannot go off of emotions. No way. We cannot, like you said, we, we battle not in flesh and blood, yeah. but principalities. Just so it's not the person, right. you know, it's the spiritual warfare. Right. So that's what I got um, entangled in. Right. And so it's kind of like you you hear God's word, but you ignored it and you just went off your emotion. In the heat of the moment. Yes. And I didn't even know that um, she was even stabbed at all. It was, it happened so fast. Yes. And then it's like we were separated. And it wasn't until later that evening where it was like, um, the police are looking for you and there's yellow tape. And I'm like, what doesn't yellow tape mean somebody's dead? And wow. they was like, I think so. And it was like, it was like crickets. I was like, oh my God, what did I do? Wow. Like, how, how did that happen? You know? And it, so we just, my, my message is besides having faith in God, <clears throat> my message is to, you know, show and tell other women that, it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? You have to know your worth and, and, and doing anything out of emotion, you have to stop and think. That's right. In any situation, even the good, you That's know, right. you want to stop and consult with God and say, well, Lord, what do you have for me? But even if you don't do that, if you're not that far with your relationship with the, with the Christ, it's like still stop and take a beat, you know, think about the consequences or think about, you know, your reaction you know, because every action is going to bring a reaction, but it has to be the right one. That's powerful. That's so, powerful. So my question is, how much time did you have to serve, you know, um, and was it, you know, I could imagine your father trying to bail you out because he had bails bonds and everything. Mm -hmm. how, how much time yeah. did you have to serve, um, and, and, and then how did you begin to reshape your life after you got out? <laughs> okay. So this is where God comes in. Even though my dad was a bell bondsman, well known, um, I felt he was embarrassed. I felt I felt ashamed of bringing this light to him. Right. Although he did not want anyone to bail me out, the guy that I was with actually took my father the bell money. My bill was five hundred thousand dollars. Jesus. And he took him the money, but my dad said no the Lord told me to let her stay there for her safety. So just to point this out, how God works. So when I went to my arraignment, um, they did the, you know, this, the, um, what do you call that? I guess, you know, talking about the case and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after that, where this, I'll say the sentencing. Mm -hmm. So 
the DA, which is always the defense for the city or the state, whatever, um, had nothing bad to say. The judge was like, she's not prison material. So I'm going to recommend youth authority. So we had just built a new women prison called Chowchilla. Mm -hmm. Now the paperwork said I was going to Chowchilla. Mm -hmm. Judge recommended youth authority. They didn't say send me there. So the paperwork was to Chowchilla. I stayed in a branch they called um, Consumers um, Correctional Center for six months. God held that paperwork for six months. Wow. I believe if they would have sent me to the women's prison, I would have stayed a little bit longer. I took a deal because I did not want to go to trial for uh, six years. So you do half of that. I end up serving two years, two months, and two days in Ventura Youth, um, Youth Authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is where, you know, once you turn 26, then they ship you on to prison. Right. But, you know, but with me, like, um, when I asked, I said, why am I still here? What's going on? You know, because once you're, once you're locked up, you have no rights. You don't know what's going on. You only know what people are telling you. Right. So I asked my father, you know, well, what's, why am I still here? You know, why haven't they came and gotten me yet? So he went back to the judge and they went over the paperwork and it showed I was supposed to be shipped to Chowchilla. And he said, no, I recommend youth authority. So they changed the paperwork and I was gone within 48 hours. That was that was nobody but but Jesus. Right. For that situation and for, for that to happen. But God wanted you to to get to wake up and smell the coffee and be like, Okay, I was talking to you before and you let your emotion dealing with that dude yes. cause you to do something that was totally unlike you. But the right. flip side is your reputation spoke for itself. So people, how you live your daily life can cause things to work in your favor if you do get in trouble. Yes, because I was actually in my internship for a medical assistant. Wow. And I had a one-year-old child. Okay. So it's like I left my child at one, and this is a whole nother subject that maybe someone is going through now. I left my child at one. When I returned, she was four. So wow. you know there's a bond that is created in that time frame. Yes. That I missed. Mm -hmm. And so by missing that, our relationship has always been estranged because the bonding was made with my mom versus myself. The formative years. Yeah. So, um, wow. Let's fast forward to today. Um, give give us your story of triumph. You know, uh, did, did did you marry the same guy, or did you did the Lord send you a new guy? You <clears throat> know, did he get in your DM and say, "Woman of God," you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you how did you meet this new guy and and tell me of your victory right now? Okay, so um, back when I had my daughter, um, I was living in an apartment and it was a guy that stayed upstairs. And um, me being the flirtatious person I was at that time, he was he had a, a Mustang with gold Daytons and all this stuff, Jerry Curl. He looked kind of similar to Bobby Brown, you know. Wait, 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 so wait, wait, wait. Did, like, you, did you say Jerry Curl? Going, yeah, yeah. That was Jerry Curl yeah. time. Ooh, follow yeah. the drip, follow the drip. <laughs> Go ahead. So um, <laughs> so he was working on his car or whatever. So me, you know, what's going on with your car? You know, and he was like, oh, it's not starting, whatever, whatever. And I was on my way to, I was going to City College and he was uh, needing to go to work. So long story short, I offered him a ride. He took it. I dropped him off and he asked me out. So then um, I never saw him again. Never saw him again. Um, we went our separate ways in life's journey. And then um, now when I came back after writing my two books, I was doing a um, function, an event with my books. And he was actually the DJ. So he recognized me and I didn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. recognize him. And he was like, Angie, because that's my former name, Angie. I go by Angela now. Right. Um, and he was like, he said, from Atlanta. So I was thinking, okay, I've lived in Atlanta for 16 years. Did I meet you in Atlanta? And he was like, no, it's, it's um, you know, Tim from Cedar Ridge. And it was that part Yeah. And so I was like, oh, my goodness. So anyway, 
we connected. Um, uh, nothing, oh, they want to know that he still got nothing, the Jerry nothing, curl. Nothing, no, nothing came okay. of that. Um, we just ended up um, just catching up. He, mm. I told him a little bit of my background. He told me what he had gone through. Similar, similar um, stories. Okay, so then I had a girlfriend that um, wanted me to meet someone. She said, he's a boss, you know, I want you to meet him. So we never hooked up. But then when I finally did meet him, I was like, oh, I know him. That's Tim, you know. So I was like, mm-mm, no. So um, she was like, what? I was like, no, nah, he's not my type. You know, there we go with the type. So I went back to Georgia. I moved back to Georgia. And luckily, um, God brought me back there. So I had my father for one full year. My mm -hmm. father passed suddenly from an aneurysm. And so with that, I had to come back and do the memorial in Sacramento. So um, I was also working on my expungement and the guy, Tim, was actually um, an instrument in that. So he said, well, let's have a meeting. Give me your paperwork. I'll work on the thing, everything for you. So in that time frame, it was only, I would say, 60 days. Well, actually 30 days. I went back to Georgia. He was um, talking to me every day, seeing what I was going through. Um, my father was actually purchasing a home for me and him next door to his current residence. So I could have a place to stay because all my sisters had houses and I was seemed like you know, I wasn't purchasing a home or anything. I had previously, but I I, I um, moved back to California. So anyway, he just wanted to make sure that me and my son had a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And my father passed the night before the closing. So it was like, I was left with like, what do I do? I'm, I'm living in a hotel that I'm working in with my child. Um, what do I do? So the guy, Tim said- Okay, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. You 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 dropped something, and you, so you got to catch up, catch us up, because you said you had a daughter, you know. Right. And so then you now I have son. I have three children now. Okay. This okay. is this is like twenty thirty years later. Gotcha. Okay, so now I have a son. Okay, who is also by a minister. So that's a whole nother story, but it's in the book. And so um, that was my church life. Okay, so with this with this particular guy, he long story short, he came and got me and my son. And he said, I said, well, I'm not fornicating or I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. doing any of that shack. And he said, no, I'm going to do it the right way. I want to marry you. And I was like, okay, <laughs> it is December. I want to get married on January 1st. So he was like, let me call you right back. So then he called me back. He said, I'll be there Tuesday to get you. And then we made arrangements to go to Las Vegas to get married. So we've been married now five years. Um, He's a great man, uh, great integrity. He's a community leader here in Sacramento. And I just feel like God put us together mm -hmm. for a purpose. Yeah. And now being newlyweds, you know, you have to really, because we didn't date, you know, so everything is like dating, but married. So, you know, we're just now coming to where things are meshing to where we're seeing our purpose and what God has for us. And actually as a family dynamic, because when I married him, my son now was nine, and now he's going to be 15. And we just had a family meeting last night to where we got out um, our feelings about, okay, we, we're living in separate bubbles in one home. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I want, as I've been encouraging them, let's do family things together. Let's stop being so focused on our own goals mm -hmm. and focus on a family unit. So that's where I am today. I'm an active member of my church center of praise. And, um, you know, I just, I just reflect in all every day. It's like people can't imagine, you know, what I've gone through right. and, and it never goes away. Mm -hmm. so I, I went through last year, I went through a season of condemnation. Mm -hmm. I went through that season and I, God had to remind me there's no condemnation because it's like um, everything happens for a reason. Yes. You have to trust yes. that I used you for this this purpose. Yes. And now it's like it's not an it's an honor, but it's not like a a bolsterous honor. But it's like Lord, thank you, yes. thank you for trusting me. Because now I know that you have me in your hands. I know that you know your plans for me is to prosper and not to harm me. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. So, so my question to you: Are you happy? 
Hmm. Good question. And I have to be honest. Um, what is happiness? You know, I don't hmm. think I found that yet, but I'm at peace. Okay. Do you have joy? I Cause, do. Because happiness I is do. predicated on things happening. Joy yeah. comes from within. Right. So I think it would be the joy because when I look around, like God knows my desires and I was just telling him, Lord, well, thank you for the physical things. Yes. But I also thank you for my mindset, my changing mindset, because a lot of things that I used to do, I look at people doing it and we're not judging, but we're just, you know, baby girl, I've been there. You've been there. So yeah. Just waiting for you to catch up, follow what I'm doing, you know. This story is so powerful. I mean, because you don't look like what you've been through. If anybody saw you, they would never think that you've been through what you've been through. Yeah. But that, God. That's what they told me in Georgia. And when they said, you should write a book. And I was like, a book? I'm not telling anybody nothing. Right. So it's like when I <laughs> left Georgia, um, leaving a relationship, um, they had no clue. And then the books came out. So it was like, okay, this was me, you guys, you know. Because I developed a lot of close friendships, and I only told, like, two people. But you're overcomer, so you have no nothing to be ashamed about. Yes. God allowed you to go through to go to. And yes. now you're in your season where you're going to be a blessing to so many young ladies and young men about, um, you know, it seemed like the the bad guys, because he seemed like he was a, a drug dealer and stuff, it, yes. they, they draw because they find, they find people who are... Or feel like they're missing something, yeah. And they capitalize on that and they draw them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think you're gonna be a blessing to so many people. So hold your head up and keep, keep testifying. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And one, one of the things I just want to encourage you is that my mother, um, she always said, happiness is a choice, and mm -hmm. you have to choose to be happy. You have to choose to live your life. You know, um, always remember that no one has a heaven or hell to put you Come in. Come on. You know, um, and the funny thing about it is you had to go through it, you went through it, but there's so many other people that could have gone through that same thing, but for the grace of God. Right. But in this time and in this season, I want you to choose to be happy and realize that everything that you have gone through is for this season. And when you when you look back on every hard time, every time that you were didn't know if you <coughs> could make it, you got to say, okay, God, why did I go through that? Right. Because I know there was a reason why I went through that mm -hmm. so that I can help someone else. It's so it's so uh, amazing. I have a lot of people right now that are fighting cancer, and they ask God, why am I going through this? And it's because how they're going to go through it is going to help someone else to realize that cancer is not a death sentence. Cancer right. is a way for you to show that God is still yet real. Still healing. And he's still yeah. healing. Yes. And, and there's a purpose for you to go through it. So I want to encourage you, one, to first love yourself. Yes. And love the completeness of that. Love your flirtatious ways. Love your personality. Love the all men all pause, but know that it was it was meant for you for good and not for anything else. And then love your husband and begin to connect with your husband, not just around you and your son, but you and the family. And understanding that as you begin, as you begin to to love him for right where he is. Old Jerry Curl wearing That's Tim. Uh, brother uh, brother Tim <laughs> mm -hmm. and and begin to speak life into the relationship. Yes. You know, as you begin to speak life into the relationship, life into your family, you will find that you will manifest it because mm -hmm. you're walking in it. Mm -hmm. And even when, you know, there's a disappointment or something might not go on, you know, just look back and say, I love you so much because you are making me better each and every day. Son. Uh, I know everything is not what you might want it to be right now, but I want you to keep on living and let's do this thing together. We're going to live life out loud. So I just want to encourage you in the Sacramento area. I come to Sacramento. And this is amazing. And she needs to do a book tour. The funny, the funny thing about it is, is that um, one of my dearest friends used to be over all the prisons in the, in the state of California. And, mm. and doing prison reforms and everything else that nature, you know, there there's some things that you need to hook up with her about yes. because there are some women that are in prison right now that need to hear your story. 
and even the testimony that because my reputation was come on, intact, come on. There was nothing they could say bad about Come on. Me. And this was a one-time situation that, you know, sometimes it was... In the heat of the moment. Yeah, in yeah. the heat of the moment. So I just want to encourage you uh, to understand uh, that our program director said, is she on a speaking tour yet? If not, get your traveling shoes on. She need to be speaking. That's right for, for youth homes and, and yeah. young ladies who are, you know, because in this culture we're living in, they're so influenced by their peers and right. on social media. Mm -hmm. You are a living testimony. And some people have said that we need to make this into a lifetime movie uh, uh, so that people can I see I have it. the screenplay written. Okay, you have the screenplay written? Mm -hmm. All right, sis. You better um, go, Angela. Uh, hit me up <laughs> offline. I'm going to give you a contact. Okay. okay. Uh, that Thank, might, you so uh, much. Be... Thank you so much for just a confirmation of, of it all, you know, because I was just speaking to those exact words to my son last night. Um, you know, because, you know, kids are going through yes. the anxiety and we're, we're trying to understand as parents, what are you anxious about? Like, we have the resources with your parents. Right. It's something that we, you know, we have to remember how we were at their age. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just thank you for that confirmation. And then last but not least, what I would encourage you to do is do what I call snapshots. Uh, use your Use your Instagram, those one minute snapshots where you take snapshots from your book and put it out on a weekly or a daily basis to encourage everybody else and um, and watch how the overflow will come. Uh, you will have no more want, you know what I'm saying? Because you'll be walking in your purpose. And, and even in walking in your purpose, it is going to bring you closer to a God once for you oh, and yes. your family. She was definitely Amen. chosen. Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you you, you yes. were chosen. Everybody can't. I'm, I'm happy you're in your right mind because so yeah. many people – would not be in the right mind to go through what you've gone through. Because right. it was so That's unexpected. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for my changing mindset. Yeah. And I, when I got shot, I got shot in my head. So there's a dent, like, right here in in my head that um, I used to be ashamed of because it was an entry and an exit. And so it was two bald spots, you know, mm -hmm. and I would be, like, so self-conscious about that. And now I walk, you know, proudly because... It wasn't but God that saved me. So you got shot? Yeah. We know That's about the stabbing, but we didn't know about the... Gun violence, um, that was another incident. So that's why when, when, when Creflo was speaking, wow. he said, you could have still been in prison. You yeah. could have died from the gunshot wound. He was specific to the head. He said the car accident alone could have killed you. Wow. And so that was that was God telling me, you know, it's by my grace and mercy right. that you're here. Right. Yeah. The enemy was trying to take you out, sister. Don't you know when you have a calling on your life, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and yes. destroy? Yes. The devil was all those situations would have taken somebody else out. Yeah. You could be a vegetable right now being shot right. where you were. Right. But so, God. So so I'm gonna ask you a question. Ooh. So so did your daddy say, see that hard head of yours <laughs> saved your life? <laughs> oh well no he didn't say that but you know at the time he was just he had no words he was just like Angela he just would shake his head Angela but I will say in the time my dad came and stayed with me that year that I went back right. that God, God gave us that year together I brought him to my um my apartment in, in Atlanta the city to take him to his follow up appointments and he would just say I'm so proud of you wow you know, he just, I'm so proud of you. And I would love to share, like, Daddy, you know, I don't even listen to, like, regular music anymore. I always want to listen to gospel. He was wow. like, that's the Lord, girl, you know. See? So just different things. I wanted him to see how God, you know, not just physically, but in my heart. Yes. You know, my desires had changed. I wanted him to see that. Wow. And, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he said he was proud of me. Wow. You know, even in my situation, you know. We had plans, so we thought, but, you know, our plans are not God's plans. That's right. It's powerful. I just want to encourage you with this last thing, <coughs> that God is going to heal the relationships that are broken. And, don't, and do not accept that they will remain the same. That you continue to do what God tells you to do. He'll do and it. And watch him do the rest. He'll do it. Amen. Amen. He'll Thank do you. it. Well. Thank you for this interview. This is really a blessing and an inspiration to, to me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
And with that being said, this is Angela Holmes. Your new book is called? Uh, the new book is Here I Am. The book is Here I Am. The first book is called? Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Come on, Second lukewarm. Second book is called? I don't look like what I've been through. I don't look like I've been through. So she went from lukewarm to I don't oh, look yeah, like I've been through. Oh, yeah, God said he'll spew you through. out. Yes. And, and, and the last one, once again. Here I am. Here I am. Well, I tell you, that is what That's it powerful. is. Here I am. And simply this, that favor is not fair. It ain't. Again, this is Angela Holmes.